Hi, it's Monday on week four and we're talking about business. Now, a couple of people have voiced questions about the business chassis that I introduced earlier on in the course. So I wanted to go a little bit more into that and explain how you can use these numbers, these important numbers to model your business and to see what's working and where you can improve, which is the most important thing. So what I've done here is I've created a spreadsheet which I'll share with you. And this spreadsheet has got the critical numbers that you need to record probably every month. And what's really important about this is because this is actually a really genuine, transparent picture of the way that your business is working. So you can see what changes every month and what's really important for making you money at the end of the month, which is what really matters. And as well as that, I've got on here the beginnings of some ideas about how we can improve the business, what we can tweak, what we can adjust in order to increase that magic number at the end of the month, which is your profit. So I'll just talk you through this spreadsheet in the way that I've set it up. So this is slightly different to the generic business chassis that I introduced earlier on. This is really angled towards a web business. So let's say this is your business and I'll talk through it step by step. So it all starts with visits. Assuming that all your business comes via your website to start with, so we're looking at organic traffic and possibly pay-per-click traffic. So if you get 100 visits in a month, and out of those visits, you get five leads, that gives you our first performance indicator, which is lead conversion rate. Now, on this spreadsheet, that is indicated with a, a gray column because this is a calculated value. Now, lead conversion rate is very important, and visits is very important, because the one multiplied by the other gives you your leads. So you can't directly influence the number of leads that you get. All you can do is influence the number of visits you can get and the proportion of those leads that you convert. And the number of leads will generate, hopefully, a number of sales. And there's another conversion rate there, which is sales divided by leads gives you your sales conversion rate. Now that's a different feature, that's a different performance indicator because you may do a good job of turning visitors into leads but how good a job do you do of turning leads into customers? And they're two very separate things and it's very important that we track them. So again you can't influence directly the number of sales that you get, it's how many leads can you generate and then how good a job do you do at conversion? Then you've got the average value of a sale. So let's say in this month you made one sale and that was worth £1,500 for sake of argument. The average value sale is the total value of all sales divided by the number of sales. And hopefully you'd be looking to drive this number up over time as well. And finally we're going to look at the cost of sales. How much does it actually cost you to get your traffic? How much does it cost you to convert sales? going to meetings? How much does it cost you to build a website? How much does it cost you to deliver this work that you do? And if we can reduce the amount it costs you to run your business, then this magic number at the end, which is your profit, should go up. So the profit is the total value of sales, take away the cost of sales. So as you, as you go through this month by month, you should see these numbers hopefully go up. I'm going to drag these down over time, so maybe you make two sales in that month, which means that your sales conversion rate has gone up from 20 to 28.6. And let's say that those sales were worth £3,500 in that month, etc. And your cost of sales is about the same, let's say it was 900 which means that your profit for that month has gone up. So you can see Visits has only gone up a little bit, lead conversion rate has only gone up a little bit, sales conversion rate has only gone up a little bit, it's, gen it's resulted in two sales here, average value in sale has only gone up a little bit, but yet the profit has gone up hugely. It's updating the the formatting here. So you can see how small changes to these factors can result in a big change in profit at the end of the month. Now let's go on to look at 
ways that you can increase those key performance indicators to generate more profit at the end. So looking at visits first of all, what can you do to get more visits to your website? Well, we've already started looking at keyword research. That should result in really adding landing pages or modifying your existing pages to target the more lucrative markets. As simple as that. Another thing that we'll look at later on in the course is advertising and how and when to use advertising. Because advertising can also generate a, um, a cost of sale. So you need to take that into account. So when you've got people coming to your website, how can you generate more leads from that traffic? Well, targeted having targeted landing pages in the first instance is one really good way. Because when you've got a page that says exactly what people are looking for and offers them exactly what they're looking for, then that fact alone can be better at grabbing their attention and engaging them and giving them the confidence that they've come to the right place. And then generally this very, very broad thing we've got here called on-site marketing, which really means how good a job does your website do of convincing people that they've found what they're looking for here. And that's a whole couple of months work in itself. So we'll be doing a lot of work in looking at conversion rate optimization over time and how to make that really effective. Then sales conversion rate, how many of those leads can you convert to sales? That all comes down to your sales process. We'll talk a lot about your sales process, how to make your customers feel that they really listen to, how to give them confidence that you are the right person to deliver exactly what they need. Total number of sales, like total number of leads, is not something that we directly influence. Average value of sale, there's a few things that you can do there. Just looking at your pricing, putting your pricing up, can quite often drive up your average value of sale and your profit significantly. There's something else called upselling. When somebody comes to you, what else can you sell them? They think they want X. Can you sell them X, Y, and Z as well? Choosing the right markets is very important. There are cheap markets out there and there are more lucrative markets out there. And another key thing, choosing the right clients. Who do you say yes to? Who do you say no to? Where do you stand your ground? Where do you draw a line in the sand? I'm sure we'll be looking at that a lot over time. And then finally, in order to come out with your profit, we're going to look at cost of sale. Now, there's no point doing $1,000 worth of work in a month if you spend $2,000 worth of time and actual money and resources to deliver that work. So the more you can bring down your cost of sale, the more profit you're going to make at the end of the month. And just a few starting point ideas here is, one, work quicker. Can you work more effectively, more efficiently? And this should go up over time. Another thing you could do would be to outsource particular tasks to other people. If you're really, really good at sales, but you're not so good at the design process or the production process or logo design or copywriting or SEO or these things, and we'll, we'll find out what our strengths are over the course, then it can really make sense to outsource some of those tasks to other people. You can also outsource your sales. You can buy leads from others if they've got more leads than they can deal with. Another thing is to buy resources. So rather than create a whole new website theme or template from scratch, it may be a lot more effective to go out and buy a template that, that already exists. Now there aren't very many good ones out there, but there are some very good ones. And it can be a lot cheaper to spend $50 on a template than it can be to spend several days creating one for yourself. Another one is to look for free resources. Places like Flickr are very good for finding free photos that are licensed under the Creative Commons license, for example. But again, you can go out and spend money on pictures as well. But spending $20, $30, $40 here and there on some icons or on some photos or on a new font can make a big difference to the value that a customer thinks they're getting from your website and doesn't necessarily cost you all that much. So I hope this has been a slightly more thorough and more useful introduction to your site. I'm going to share this spreadsheet with you. And as soon as we start actually doing business, you may want to start using this now and actually starting to put these figures in. All of these white columns, you can put your own data in there. And we'll be using this over time, over the next seven or eight months with the, the coaching students to monitor the progress of your business.